I'm ready to go another fucking video. God damn you, motherfucking fuck. Get your fucking ass out Alright, so we're talking about goddamn Terrorizer. As you saw on the motherfucking uh, thumbnail, greatest grindcore album of all time, or whatever the fuck it says. Is it the greatest? I, I mean, I'm sure you can say, oh no, well, fucking uh, Repulsion or uh, Siege, the first Siege album, you know, Electro Hippies or Napalm Death, early stuff, SOB, Sabotage, Organized Barbarian, are, are those. Those are all really fucking good too, so I love all that shit, so is Terrorizer World Downfall the greatest? It could be. It's up to a matter of opinion, but for me, I fucking love that album as much as I did when I bought it back then to now. I still have this original cassette that I bought back then. Still smells brand new too. I took care of my shit back then. I didn't have it just throw it all in the fucking car like a lot of people used to do back then. But uh, really, really good uh, album. This is so influential to me. I'm sure everybody has this, whether it's CD, LP. I wish I bought the original LP back then, but I bought the cassette. And oh fucking well. But yeah, man, it's good. And what even conjured this? Uh, idea to do this is that he, sure if you watched the previous video I did the uh, video about Scott Burns I got got this book for Christmas which is uh, highly recommended it just talks about all the sessions and albums he recorded but I did a video on this so check it out but I after reading this I decided to go back and just because I was in the moment listening to some of the old stuff from that he produced and I put in World Downfall and you know you ever have one of those albums you know it's so fucking good but you just haven't listened to it in a while and you put it on you realize yes this is so fucking good and I put it on and damn it's a good album man just fucking raw in your face and, and you know what's funny you're know, looking at the uh, cover with all the turmoil and stuff a lot of old grindcore albums had that feel to it the Napalm Death albums had that as well um just cut and paste kind of uh hand made feel to it collage collage, feel, composite, that's what it's called. Of all this fucked up shit in the world, this is still relevant just as much as today, probably even more now in this fucked up world of fucked up politics, people, uh, power, greed. It's, that, that's why I fucking hate politics. I hate watching TV. I don't give a fuck which political avenue you fall. I don't fuck all you motherfuckers because it's all a bunch of this power hungry bullshit just leave me the fuck alone I don't want to have nothing to do with your fucking fucked up world your regular TV sending propaganda and, and this is not going oh it's left or right no I don't got all that shit I don't want to see that fucking crap but yeah anyway uh, all this stuff right here enslaved by propaganda songs like that uh, Fear of Napalm just good fucking album um in looking at the uh you know, read over the book. A lot of the stuff I already knew, but it was you know recorded in 1989, which was right before the the death metal surge, so to speak. So it was a nice little area there. And then uh, Morbid Angel did the uh, Altars of Madness that same year. And recorded in two days, two fucking days. So they just went for it. And I know in the book uh, Scott Burns says he was excited to do it because he had heard uh, recently at that time Altars of Madness was, was recorded more sound, but not by Scott Burns. But uh, it was in the same studio, and he was excited to work with Pete Sandoval, because fucking badass goddamn drummer. So he was excited to work with him on that. And it's also funny that uh, Morbid Angel did record more sound, but they purposely did not want to work with Scott Burns just because they wanted to sound different from the peers. Because I know, I think Obituary slowly, slowly, slowly We Rot was recorded around that time as well. So they were trying to sound a little different, which that's fine. But... Uh, they did that. Apparently, what I'm understanding is Dave Vincent was very instrumental on getting this uh, band say, uh, signed to Earache because at the time they kind of had, were in a hiatus. You know, you had Jesse Pintado was either about to join Napalm Death or Napalm Death and Pete Sandoval was Morbid Angel and Oscar Garcia was doing his thing with Nausea, which I fucking love Nausea. Not the New York Nausea, the LA Nausea, Oscar Garcia. So they were doing that shit. Um, 
So they flew in when they record it, they record it in Florida. So they flew in Garcia and Pintado from LA to record the shit. And uh, I guess it was a $1,200 budget, which back then is pretty damn cheap. I know nowadays a lot of people record shit at home and there's people have more access to recording uh, equipment or software or whatever. But back then, 1200 bucks, that was pretty fucking cheap for an album. And Scott Burns wanted it to have like a very live feel to it, which it does. Yeah, I fucking love the production on uh, World Bell Ball. I love it. And uh, it's kind of interesting in the book, though. It talks about how Scott Burns just told Pete Sandoval, just fucking go with it. Just be punk rock and just, just fucking go for it. And, and you can tell those drums were aggressive and just pounding, just in, just in your face. Really good stuff. But it was very influential. And uh, it's also crazy to talk about how uh, Pete Sandoval was doing the blast beats with one foot instead of two to the double bass, which you gotta have a fast ass fucking foot to do that. If you're keeping the double, the bass pedal in line with the, the snare snare hit and the cymbal hit, whatever you're hitting, that, that's uh, pretty difficult. It's also interesting too, uh, before the, when they recorded this, the other bass player, um, or the bass player for Terrorizer was Garvey. Apparently he was in the book, I didn't know this, but in the book they were, Garcia mentioned that uh, he was locked up in jail when they recorded that, so that's why they got Dave Vincent to fill in on bass for that. And there are stories in there about, uh, quote unquote, what Ar Ar Garcia said that Dave Vincent was trying to change the songs around, which I don't know, I guess I could see that, but hopefully, luckily they didn't because they kept the uh, integrity of the songs, which sounds fucking great. It's also interesting too about the vocals because I love Oscar Garcia's vocals on Terrorizer and Nausea. It's just fucking raspy, death metal y. Kind of like Max Cavalera in a way, but more brutal, if you ask me. Uh, I think it's great vocals, but they, he mentioned in the book that uh, they're telling him he needs to switch his vocals up because it sounded too much like uh, Jeff Becerra from Possessed, which at the time, you know, in 89, that was still pretty new stuff. Uh, so he switched it up a little bit, and uh, again, I fucking love Oscar Garcia vocals. So uh, yeah, you probably know the history of Terrorizer. They started in 85, and kind of ended in 89, then regrouped and did some more shit, but uh, it's funny, they were uh, originally known as Unknown Death, and then I guess they heard the Napalm Death Scum album, and they decided this is what we want to do, so they were influenced by Napalm Death, obviously, and took in that direction, they eventually changed it to Terrorizer, which is uh, a, a take on the master song, Terrorizer, that song is on the first master LP, which I like master a lot, uh, I like the original version of the first recording of the album, their debut album, and I, I do like the one that came out on Nuclear Blast, and even the other one, The Seventh Day God Created Master, or whatever the fuck it's called, it's, it's pretty good. Some of the other, other stuff kind of got lost off the bandwagon. I did listen to some other stuff, which I do, I'm not going into that, but uh, Master is definitely one band that stayed the same. They still sound exactly the same, but it gets kind of boring these days, and they've put out a lot of albums with some shitty-ass artwork cover. But anyway, I've seen Master a couple times, very good band, but that's another story. So uh, back to uh, Terrorizer. Yeah, for me with uh, with Terrorizer, I, I uh, when I first heard this, I cannot remember. This was so long ago when I bought this, but I I think I first heard Terrorizer on this uh, compilation, which I did a, a video a year or so ago about most influential death metal grindcore compilations, and I forgot to add this, which... Uh, is really good grind crusher. Wish I would have bought the LP, but I didn't. But it had Terrorizer. I mean, listen to this. If you don't have it, Repulsion, uh, Caucus, Terrorizer, Hell Bastard, which is good. Carnage, great. Naked City, yes, I love Naked City. John Zorn, Filthy Christians, Old Lady Drivers, Intense Degree, great hardcore. Sore Throat, yes, never mind the Napalm. Napalm, Death and Tomb, Nocturnus, Bull Thrower, Lawnmower, Death, Cadaver, Sweet Tooth. Mighty, for, Mighty Force, Spastic Blur, Heresy, Unseen Terror, Napalm Death, I, I, fucking great. And I learned a lot of bands on here, some I already knew, but a lot of them I did hear for the first time. Like this and at, at uh, Death's Door from Road Racer, those are two compilations that were so influential. But anyway, I'm pretty sure I heard Terrorizer on here first. I, I'm pretty certain of it. And it's interesting to, uh, you know, once Jesse Pintado left Terrorizer went to Napalm Death. In uh, Harmony Corruption, you can definitely tell the guitar sound is very reminiscent to uh, Terrorizer World Downfall. 
you can t definitely hear that Pentano influence, and I, I fucking love it. Again, people talk shit. I think I've mentioned this before in the uh, Scott Burns book video. People talk shit about Harmony Corruption. I like it. I mean, it's not their best album, but it is pretty fucking good. And it does have that terrorizer guitar sound to it. I also had gotten this uh, seven inch. It's a rehearsal uh, demo. I, I think this is sought after now, I guess. I think people pay a lot of money for this, I guess. I don't know. It's on uh, Satanic Records, 1991. Uh, this is the same label that uh, bootlegged the uh, original uh, original Morbid Angels, of Abomina Abominations of Desolation, whatever the fuck, I can't think straight, which I have that too. But they put this out, it's really, really cool. It's got some rehearsals, which sounds okay. It's rough, it's still good enough. And there's a little bio on here and whatnot. Very cool stuff. I've seen bootleg shirts with the same artwork on it. And it's interesting, after you know they recorded World, World Downfall, all these years went by, and then uh, 2004, they came out with Darker Days Ahead. Yeah, 2000, actually this is 2006, I can't fucking remember. I, I lose all my, I, I mix up the, tr the time frames. Um, but yeah, this one came out and uh, I bought it. it it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I was, Jesse Pintado was on it and uh, it, uh, Sandoval was on it. So it looks good. I just really wish that uh, Oscar Garcia was on it, but I guess at the time, or still, so they're, don't see eye to eye and he's stuck with nausea. On this album, Anthony Revshawk does the vocals. He's uh, also sings for Resistant Culture, which I, I haven't heard. I, I think I listened to him back then. It's just like a kind of a crust band, I think. I, it's been a long time. His vocals sound good. I mean, it's fine on here, but I just really wish Oscar Garcia was on this one. Um, he continued on with uh, Nausea. This is the one that was on Wild Rags Records. I've talked about this one before. Really good fucking album, man. Crimes Against Humanity. Yeah, they put out a lot of demos. I have this uh, little collection here too. Nausea with some demos from 91, 92, 93. Great fucking band. It, I, I, if you haven't listened to Nausea, it, it's pretty much like Terrorizer continued. To me, Nausea sounds way fucking better than this. Way fucking better. Nausea, it's one of my favorite fucking bands. And, and you know, Terrorizer continued and they released some other albums, uh, like Hordes of Zombies, Caustic Attack. I, I've listened to those. I, I, I could sit right here, I bought Darker Days Ahead. It's okay, but it's Terrorizer, but it's just Pete Sandoval and it, it's just not the same. To me, it sounds more just like a straightforward death metal release, which it's good. I mean, it, they're good albums, but I, I just didn't feel like I needed to buy them. And they just don't have the same uh, catchiness and raw aggression like World Downfall. And like besides the fast, you know, DB and hardcore kind of beats and then the blast beats, there was a lot of catchy, just rocking kind of stuff in the middle. It, it, it was very memorable. And some of these new albums, I, I, they don't have that. Maybe I should give them more of a listen, but I just love World Downfall. And when I hear, when I hear more stuff like, uh, like Terrorizer, I go with uh, Nausea. And of course, uh, I see that uh, Terrorizer is playing shows with Pete Sandoval, but then there's also Terrorizer LA with Oscar Garcia playing, and he has, I guess, members of the Sadistic Intent and some other people in the band, which I, if I was gonna see one of these versions of uh, Terrorizer, I would wanna see Terrorizer LA. I wanna see the one with Oscar Garcia. Because uh, that's, uh, he, his voice is, of course, Pete Sandoval's drum as well, but his voice is, is what it needs, absolutely. It's just like all these other bands. You have Venom and Venom Inc. and Cro-Mags and two different versions. Harley Flanagan and John Joseph's a bunch of stupid shit and different versions. I've seen both versions of the Cro-Mags and all that shit like that. But what do you guys, what do you think? What is the greatest fucking grindcore album? It's up to debate. I mean, it, it's... It could be Siege, it could be Repulsion, it could be Napalm Death Scum, I, I don't know. You may even think something else. Which you're all right, but Terrorizer, Terrorizer, mm, yes, one of my favorite fucking albums. But, uh, also, hey, I want to do this. Shout out to the fucking Casey Kasem of Metal, Eddie at Realms of Metal. It's a fucking great shirt. I like he made, made a long sleeve one. It feels like the old school death metal sh shirts and uh, nice artwork. Go to his goddamn channel and order this fucking shirt. He has some cool art there. and His channel is fucking really good as well. 
very uh, informative. If you haven't seen, I did that video with him on his channel, which I thoroughly enjoyed because he has a great taste in music. It's very diverse too. Because like me, I, I like death metal, black metal, hardcore, but I like other stuff too, and he's the same way, so we clicked very well. I'm pretty sure we'll do something else in the future, but check out his shit. Um, also, I'll be going on uh, Vincent Crowley from the Vincent Crowley band, Asheron, all that stuff. Probably do it, be doing another uh, collaboration with him on his channel, which I look forward to because I enjoyed the uh, conversation with him as well. Um, other news, well, the same shit. Our Morton Red t shirts, they got fucked up. They're in process of getting the new ones, so hopefully we'll have that shit posted up soon and I'll show details of how they're not fucked up. It looks better. Uh, we're still working on the full length for uh, Go Throne Records, which Hopefully have that out soon. We will be releasing a two song CD, or not CD, uh, EP or single. Um, we're probably just gonna release it digitally, I, I guess. It's just a, like a little teaser before the full length. And these two songs that are on there are actually not gonna be on the full length because we recorded them at another time. And they're more mid-tempo, a little different feel than what we're doing on the full length. So we feel like it, they wouldn't fit properly. It still sounds like more than red, but it's just, has a different feel to it. So we'll be doing that, a little two song uh, release, and we'll be doing a music video for the title track. So look out for that goddamn shit, more stuff coming.